Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper. Welcome to Cooper Union. What's happening with human rights around our world on ThinkTech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana Nui Akea. Today's episode I'm hosting is looking at E Oni Pa'a I Kako. Let's forge our common future in Hawaii together. And joining me today are four advocates, activists, and artists of Aloha Aina. Aloha, it's an honor to be here with the four amazing advocates, activists, and artists. And I'd like to begin with Lynette. Lynette, could you share with us why January 17th is so important in our islands and in the international community? January 17th, of course, we commemorate the overthrow, illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom. And so over the years, I think, maybe beginning with Kikuni Blaisdell, we have been looking at how we commemorate our own history. So this is about us. And then yeah, everybody has written all kinds of histories about us, but this is our history written by us, about us. And so we're here. Whenever we can, we're here at the palace because this is a place. It's a point of contention. And so, yeah, we're gathered here today and waiting for a bunch of thousands of marches to head down the road to where we are. Mahalo, Lynette. And it really brings up the point that people have been saying in the indigenous world, nothing about us without us. Kuhio. Can you share with us a little bit about why January 17 is so important? Sure. Well, I, I think of it in terms of, of uh, commemorating two different dates. So there's what happened 130 years ago, which is, you know, uh, as far as Hawaiian history, that's, uh, that's so significant because, you know, that's when, you know, the, the troops landed the day before and, uh, and uh, you know, the queen felt that she, uh, you know, that she was, uh, you know, under duress. And uh, you know, signed the uh, the uh, the document that uh, you know that uh, temporarily yielded to the U.S. So there's that 130 years ago, you know, and that's just so significant. But also, it's it's 30 years from the the Onipa'a commemoration that took place in 1993. And I and I mentioned that because you know my mom uh, was was everyone there? Everybody here was everyone there back in 1993? You know, and and uh, what I've what I've noticed in um, uh, well, a year and a half ago, my 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 brother asked me to uh, to do a biography on our on our mom, and she directed the reenactment back in 1993. And so uh, so in 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 researching that, I, I realized most people don't know what happened 30 years ago down there at the palace. You know, at uh, at uh, what is it uh, over at uh, Aliiolani Hale. Uh, over at uh, you know mission houses, uh, uh, with uh, also with Governor Waihee, he didn't raise the the American flag during those days, and the numbers of people you had fifty thousand people over these days. So to me, it's commemorating both what happened a hundred and thirty years ago, but also just thirty years ago this phenomenal event took place, and most people don't even know about it. They know just bits and pieces, but the size and the scope, it was covered live on CNN. It was covered, you know, uh, it was broadcast to 48 countries, you know, over the radio. So uh, so to me, it's a commemoration of both. Uh, and, and there's so much that can be learned from what took place back in 1993. It is 30 years ago and all of us were there and it was so powerful. And it also was the anniversary of the apology bill as well, 103-150. And this year will also be commemorating 185th birthday of our Queen Lilio Kalani. Ekoa, what do you think of and why it's so important to January 17th? Well, I was with the Honolulu Star Bulletin in 1993. And <clears throat> um, my understanding is I was the first journalist to use the word sovereignty, at least in the Honolulu Star Bulletin. And this when the, the story was being edited, the, the staff rose up and they're like, does this mean we have to give up our lands in Hawaii? Uh, I mean, the the idea of sovereignty was, was so foreign to all of us. And I think that that date was important because it reintroduced the concept of, of sovereignty, of Native Hawaiian sovereignty. And, and today I am still, uh, as a homelands leader, uh, on the uh, Hawaiian homelands, uh, trying to instill in our uh, fellow Native Hawaiians 
that we never lost our sovereignty. We are still sovereign. We don't have to wait for the state government, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to give us our land. These are our lands. Uh, and uh, so that's why I feel it was important. Mahalo, thank you so much, Kekoa. Coming back to Lynette, Lynette, as Kuhio pointed out, 30 years of amazing ad advocacy and events down there. You brought up Kekuni Blaisdell and even today, I miss not taking those pictures at the end of all the events where you'd always get everybody together to take a picture. What are some of your highlights from January 17 experiences at Iolani Palace and different places that we've commemorated and coordinated campaigns? Certainly 30 years ago, on any case, ask, we are not American. I mean, that like, uh, that's been memorialized. I mean, so 30 years later, people are still saying that. So she picked up on it and that's just bold. It was awesome. The other thing that comes to mind is Kuhio's mom and these reenactments that were held all around downtown Honolulu, which were like fabulous, fabulous. And I know Kuhio told me a story once about the drama. Reenactments are like the real thing. And I, he told me one time that I think they were at Palace Square and the audience was really angry. When drama was being performed, it's no longer drama. You are there and the audience is really angry. And I think he said that they had to form a kind of a kind of security perimeter around the actors to keep them safe. And then later on, I think a lot of the actors didn't want to do that. <laughs> Don't want to do those parts anymore because nobody wanted to be the missionary, <laughs> the bad guy. Thank you so much. And, and really it does, I know it is significant for Kuhio. Maybe you can share a bit as well. And, you did bring up the point of how Nani K, and I remember last year there was this beautiful memorial to how Nani K Trask, and of course her quote of, We are not American, we are not American. Say it in your heart, say it when you sleep, we are Hawaiian, we will die as Hawaiians. That was so memorable. And to see all the photos of the exhibit down there last year really brought back many of those, those memories to honor her. But Kuhio, please share some of your amazing experiences as well. Well, it was uh, the experiences that, that, that took place back then, like I was saying before, most people don't even really believe that it actually happened. You know, it's kind of like when you talk about Martin Luther King speeches, you know, or, or like that, that Summer of Soul, you know, uh, a documentary that was, that was made, people kind of go, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, I have had the, the opportunity to see about uh, about 200 hours of video footage that they have over at Ulu Ulu and from other folks and also audio from Poka and, and other folks, uh, well, mainly from Poka of, of the events that took place. And you're right that, that we had people that were, you know, that were, uh, that went with the actors and we made announcements beforehand, you know, before the, the actors that were playing the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the committee of safety, uh, we had uh, people that uh, Glenn Grant made announcements that these are actors, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, it's important to have those feelings. But it's also to uh, it's also important to remember that these people are, are are up here because they feel the same way that you do. And they feel that this needs to be told. And so, uh, you know, the uh, there's so much that took place back in, in 1993 that we can learn from today. And it's, uh, you know, it's uh, as, as time goes by, 30 years has gone by, people are, are just kind of starting to forget. I, I remember someone was telling me, oh, you know, in 2018, the events that took place at the palace in 2018, you know, that was just, wow. You know, and I was there in 2018 and there was maybe, you know, 2000, you know, maybe uh, 3000 folks in 2018, which is great. But, you know, back in 1993, there was over the five days, there was like 50,000 people. There was, you know, uh, every, every little bit of the palace grounds was, 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 uh, was filled with people, you know, waiting for the queen to come out of the, uh, out of the palace and make her final speech there. So, uh, yeah, so those are some of the memories that I have. Mahalo Kuhio. And Keiko, can you share with us some of your memories from January 17th? So I was pretty busy. I didn't really get away from the news desk much uh, during that period. Uh, but two memories I have are, of course, of Kuhio's mother, Dallas Fogler, 
uh, who was the producer and director of that three-day reenactment uh, of the overthrow. And, um, and uh, what she did was uh, recruit one of the Star Bulletin reporters to be a Marine. And <clears throat> he was uh, this rather cynical uh, military person. And uh, so he dressed up in his Marine thing and, and he went through the reenactment and, and he had a complete transformation of attitude toward uh, indigenous rights after that experience. Uh, and, and so that, that was uh, a really a uh, vivid memory for me. <clears throat> the other memory is uh, Dallas came to my uh, home in Kailua and we were sitting on the lanai and I asked her what her Hawaiian name was. And if my memory serves me correct, she said, Kelii Ho'one Enu'u. Uh, I'm not sure, is, is that correct? Uh, Kelii Ho'one Aina. Oh, Ho'one Aina. Yeah. Okay. And I, I asked her what it means, and, and she didn't know. So I, I brought up my Hawaiian dictionary, and I said, it means the ali'i, the royalty who walks the earth uh, with the sound of thunder. And, um, and I said, and that is what you are doing. Uh, you, you are by directing this reenactment play. You are uh, you're creating thunder on the earth, and I, I bring up this story because uh, now I I live on Maui, <clears throat> and I try to use uh, people's Hawaiian names as often as I can, and um, and it goes back to that time on my lanai with uh, with Dallas, and um, and it is a way that I have of repatriating my culture. That is what has come out of 1893, 1993 for me, is the desire to repatriate my culture, uh, to utilize people's Hawaiian names. Uh, and I am myself am a practitioner of, of Oli, chant, hula, and paddling here on Maui. And uh, getting away from the uh, frenet frenetic activity on Oahu has allowed me to do this, and I'm thankful for that. We're glad that we're, as there is the Onipa Peace March happening, that you were able to find more peace Kekoa on Maui. I agree as well with my time teaching there. And maybe we can shift now because everyone here today, this isn't just something that you do to commemorate January 17th. You're the most dedicated, dynamic people really in the islands, dedicated to indigenous people's rights here in Hawaii, but around the world. Could you share with people what you do on a daily basis and how you dedicate your time for sovereignty and restoring the nation, Lynette, before the marchers come there? No, but I can hear the, the sound is picking up, you know, the background noise is picking up. They're not here yet, but people are beginning to like line up on the street. So they'll be here pretty soon. Um, what do I do on a daily basis to continue the work that we do? I know there's Makua, I I know there's so many things. Ask me again. Uh, maybe you could share a bit about Makua or other projects that you're working on? I could. So um, several projects. Malama Makua has a booth here at the palace, and we're handing out things like bumper stickers, but also asking people to sign a petition that says no lease extensions for any military base in Hawaii. People only hear about Pohakuloa and Makua and maybe Pohamoho, but there are so many that are actually up pretty soon, 2029. So we're trying to figure out, you know, whether or not people support the idea of getting the military to kind of grow up. By that, I mean, they have not been the best neighbors. And we see that happening certainly with the, you know, contaminated water um, coming out of, coming, making its way to us in Waianae. And, and so even though it's not the army that's doing that, for us, it's all basically the same thing. They're all connected and they have a, partic a particular kind of sense of entitlement and privilege that basically they can do anything they want. And that's something that we know is part of the, our idea of how we express sovereignty is that it's, it's ours. We have kuleana for everything and for the well-being of our aina. Excellent. And that really brings up two amazing points because one, the UN expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples will be doing a study on militarization of indigenous lands. And that's due January 31st. So 
maybe we could include some of that information and coordinate that campaign as well. But then you also bring up the points about what's happening today with water and how water is life and how that's just an understatement. There haven't been good neighbors. There's been drastic human rights violations and contamination of the most sacred sites. Kohio, can you maybe share some of the work that you do as well and your time that you spend dedicated for sovereignty and restoring the nation? Sure. Um, well, these days I'm, uh, I'm trying to, to collect as much footage, as much uh, audio, uh, uh, as, much, uh, as many documents as I can uh, related to, to 1993. I, you know, I did my research and everything uh, on uh, international laws that applies to Hawaii, but, uh, but more recently, it's uh, trying to, to, to tell that story you know, to, to uh, bring these things together. Because, uh, you know, back in 1992, what happened is that uh, at a certain point, people saw that, that everyone was going to be down at the palace. <laughs> like, when I say everyone, it was like everyone, <laughs> you know, because there's so much being planned. There were things on TV. There's, you know, uh, uh, I think Bumpy did like a telethon thing in, in the evening. So there was just so much going on. And so uh, at, at a certain point when people saw that it was going to happen, then they, you know, the, they, uh, they wanted to see, you know, the, there's more participation. And in that same sense, I'm just trying to, to gather all of the documentation, all of the, any footage that anybody has, because that story needs to be told. And I believe that, uh, that at, at this point, uh, it not only uh, it, it will happen, that story will get told because it needs to be told. Um, it's 30 years and it's, it's, it's time. So it is important to gather that information. And we remember the, the land occupations as well that were taking place. It also was the struggle at the UN. Uh, indigenous peoples moved for 1992 to be the year of indigenous peoples. But Spain fought against that. So they had to move it to 1993. Uh, but Rigoberta Menchu Tum did become the youngest woman at the time to win the Nobel Peace Prize. So these struggles are not that long ago and still exist today. And I think documenting and sharing that story is absolutely an important role. Okay, Koa, can you share some of the, what you, oh, but Kohio, did you want to continue? Oh, just real quickly. And you mentioned the, the apology resolution. That came directly out of the events that took place at Iolani Palace uh, because you had the, uh, you know, you had the, the meetings that took here that led directly to that apology resolution, which was passed in November of the same year. And it does bring up a good point of we need to do more action to actually actualize the articles of that resolution and to do action with those. Keikoa, can you share with us some of the work that you do? You share with us a little bit about being more of a cultural practitioner and doing the work on Maui. I know you're actually amazing and are even doing and canoeing and we're over in London recently. So you're an amazing activist living the culture on a daily basis, but share with us in your own words, some of the exciting ways that you are dedicating your time for sovereignty and restoring the nation. Uh, thank you, Joshua. So I founded a nonprofit on Maui, <clears throat> Pa'upena Community Development Corporation. Uh, so I'm the co-chair, I'm the chairwoman of the board of that entity. Uh, it's a 501c3 uh, located, uh, headquartered up here in upcountry. And our mission is to provide training, uh, resources, and advocacy to empower fellow Hawaiian homes uh, uh, beneficiaries to build homes and uh, self-sufficient communities. And I'm also the president of the Maui Lanai Mokupuni Council, which is a consortium of 18 homesteads and homestead associations. Uh, and we meet monthly on Zoom, all the leaders uh, of the associations, and uh, we try to inform our commissioner uh, what our uh, priorities are. And I I'm also on the executive council of the uh, statewide sovereign council of Hawaiian Homestead Associations. Uh, it's an umbrella group of 42 associations, uh, archipelago-wide. And, um, and we, are, we try to do policy uh, for instance, with the $600 million appropriation that's come down for the homelands. And I think the backdrop of my uh, activism is uh, repatriating Aina. So there are 203,000 acres in this federal trust, the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act Federal Trust that Prince Kuhio established in 1920. And um, only 40,000 of those acres are being homesteaded. 
uh, whereas 60,000 of those acres are being used by non-Hawaiian, non-beneficiary entities. And so I'm just trying to repatriate those lands and, and get our people onto those lands. We have almost 50,000 applications of waitlisters who are waiting for homestead awards. And, and so that's how I spend every day. All right now I'm writing a grant. I broke away from that uh, to come on with you folks today. And so that's my everyday life. Thank you. Oh, and thank you. It reminds me of the article also, I believe the Wall Street Journal broke that as well, and too little has been done on that important issue. And as we look at Aonipa'akako, and we look at forging our common future in Hawaii, maybe we could look and share together a bit about what future we see. And we know this year on the commemoration of November 27th, to look at independence and interdependence with indigenous peoples around the world, Pele really did erupt in Mauna Loa, and there are some signs, even with the lava flowing towards Wahakaloa, but what future do you see, Lynette? And you might see the future approaching you right now with the people marching towards you. But share some ideas of the future you see for Hawaii. Well, very recently uh, on the West Side, because I live in Waianae now, very recently we've, been, we've begun to focus on the people who are without homes, homeless, houseless, living all up and down the West Side coastline because they're being actually directed to us by the city, by the state, and by other states that are sending their homeless to us, which we find kind of really interesting because we, we look at this as a global issue. Capitalism, globalism, it's not going to go away. So we're trying to figure out how we as Alahui can keep ourselves afloat when we realize that there are more and more people coming in because we do not control the borders of our country. We no longer control. And so we can't keep people from coming. But since we only have, you know, basically one season, everybody wants to come here. That is a problem for us because it's really hard to care for yourselves, for your aina, when there are hordes, hordes of people pouring in all the time. I think that's, that's something we need to pay attention to because we have limited resources. We live on an island. And what I see happening more recently is that communities are realizing that governments don't help. They're not helpful. And so looking at issues and um, actions that might be community led and government supported. So trying to shift the paradigm and flip it because the reality is with or without government sanction, we're gonna move. And I think that's what all native people are doing. They cannot wait. So they're going to move, and that means that it's going to be kind of dangerous at some point. But, you know, everybody's willing to take a risk. It's dangerous, like, right now. So, excellent point, and it seems like it's getting busier down there right now. Oh and it really does bring up an important point of globalization. You connect it with the same time that the World Economic Forum is happening in Davos, and it isn't going to end. And you also then bring up how King Kalakaua was trying to navigate as well at that time to show the independence, but also be part of the global community. Kohio, what do you see as some visions and possible paths for the future? Well, you know, uh, uh, first off, I wanted to thank you, Josh, for, for, for having this uh, discussion, because uh, one of the things that I, that I noticed from looking at this, you know, 200 plus hours uh, is like the you know the speech that How Nani gave the speech that uh, that Skippy Ione uh, uh, gave just fantastic you know uh, all of these speeches but one of the things that I re I remember uh, from being there because I was you know I was in charge of the peacekeepers you know and uh, you know the 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 you know basically the the aunties that said you know that told everybody you know where to sit to not to get in the way and whatever but uh, but one of the things I remember back then and from watching this is that uh, you know back in 1993 people disagreed people see, didn't see things the same you know i remember being at meetings where you know where sometimes it would get you know a bit heated and you know and uh someone say you're an american as a, meaning that as an insult or something like this you know and uh and uh but the thing is is that those people at that same meeting would go and, you know, uh, you know, they would uh, honey or, or or whatever after the meeting, and having these discussions, it's so important because because uh, since 
1993, there seems to be, have been slowly over time, this shift where people don't have as much discussions together, you know, to, to talk these things through. So, uh, so I, uh, you know, um, there was a real sense of hope back in, in 1993, and there's still a sense of hope today, but it's in a different way. And I, and I, I, I hope to have more of these discussions like what you're doing uh, right here, Josh. You know, because it's important. It's it's so important to to not to agree, not to see everything exactly the same as everybody else, but to be able to to have a discussion where there's nuance and and where there's you know perhaps disagreement, but but that's okay. It's it's okay to work those through. You know, so so I, I see it hopeful. And I see the multiple paths that many people forge through direct action, through diplomacy, and in these thirty years, it hasn't been static at all. It's not guava jam in a, in a jar. It's so vibrant with so many different ways the culture is being expressed and the exercising of sovereignty. Okay, Cole, how about you? A little bit of a vision as well for what you see going forward. So I feel like I'm living the future now, the vision that I would like to see. Uh, you mentioned that I was in England uh, paddling. <clears throat> You know, I, I think it's a quiet revolution that's happening. Hawaii is colonizing the world with our uh, music, our hula, our culture. Um, the fact that uh, there were 2,000 uh, outrigger canoe paddlers uh, gathered together in London uh, for this uh, traditional sport, uh, it, it was wonderful. And of course, I would wish that uh, in the future, uh, that also our ethic of aloha spreads. I mean, capitalism, the culture of money has uh, sort of swept the world. And I would like to see the ethic of aloha, uh, the ethic of sharing, of caring, of uh, respect for our kupuna, all of these values that we hold dear, I would like to see that happen in the future. And we can definitely see that. It I reminds me of uh, being at the UN on World Oceans Day with Hokulea on her world navigation and the message of Malama Honua, that was so vital to take care of each other and our island Earth. And as we look today on the 130 years of the illegal overthrow commemoration, but more importantly, looking at the organizing now, we really want to thank everyone for joining us, but everyone for what you do on a daily basis. And I know we have just a brief second, so mahalo everyone. And Lynette, if there's any final words from the palace, uh, we'll let you close it out. The marches are are coming down the road, so I'm going to like, you won't be able to hear me in a minute anyway. The sound system is very loud. Um, so thank you for having me. And if, if I'm off, it's because you won't be able to hear me anyway. Thank you. Thank you for broadcasting live from Iolani Palace. And thank you also, Kuhio, Enke Koa, Mahalo Nui, and consider just the first of many conversations. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.